G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. I asked if you wanted this video and you said yes, so here it is. This is talking about duct effects, some of the unusual effects of these ducts with these coanda lips and why they went a long way towards scuttling what was a really interesting military project back in the 1950s. And first of all, I'm going to talk about this duct effect. Now, as I showed in the previous video, um, when we have air flowing over the edge of one of these coanda ducts here, like so, Um, we have an aerofoil, we effectively have a wing, uh, an annular wing that goes around the edge of the duct and that creates lift because of the Bernoulli effect, we've got rapidly flowing air, lower pressure, the air pressure from underneath is pushing on the back of the duct so you get a net forward force which if the duct is sitting vertically like this it becomes lift. Okay, So um, this lip contributes a huge amount of lift, total effect to the total lifting effect of our ducted system. Now what happens when we tilt our duct? Well, the first thing that happens, if you've flown a multi-rotor, you'll know this. When you tilt a multi-rotor or a helicopter, it starts moving in the direction towards which it is tilted. So let's take a look at this. Here's another one. I've tilted it, so it will actually be moving, obviously, as you would expect. It'll be starting to move this way through the air. It'll start moving forwards. It'll be forwards, I suppose. And what's that going to do? Well, it's going to disrupt this airflow going into the mouth of the coanda duct, around the coanda lip. What's going to happen is the air is going to effectively be coming along like this. Because we're moving, it's the same as the air traveling towards us. So the airflow that goes over this lip here, the bottom lip, will actually be increased by the air that's flowing towards, or the, the ram effect of the air that's coming along. So we're going to get, if we draw our lift bubbles, and I have a pen here, which, whoops, there goes my phone, more people wanting to get a hold of me. If we have, we draw this little low pressure bubble that I spoke about earlier, which sits on the lip here, and creates this extra thrust. What's going to happen here is that the because we've got air traveling faster, because it's being rammed in as well, the theorem of the Bernoulli's theorem says the faster the flow, the more, or the lower the pressure. Faster the flow, the lower the pressure. So therefore, if you've got pressure on the back, the greater the lift. So the air on here is going to be traveling faster because not only is it being sucked in, but now there is air effectively coming in here because we're moving forward. So you're going to get a much bigger lift bubble here. The size of that low pressure area is going to increase. So if we look at the top, however, the reverse happens. <clears throat> Whereas we before we had air flowing around here, now we have the incoming airflow is opposing that airflow. So you get much less air flowing over this lip into here. So effectively, less air and also it's traveling slower because it's opposed by the incoming airflow. So the bubble of lift that was previously quite big here almost can almost disappear. So what do we have now? It's pretty obvious to see what's going on. You've got a whole lot of lift on the bottom lip, no lift on the top of the lip. So the natural tendency for this duct is to right itself. There will be lift operating here, but very little here. So it will tend to try and rotate back to a vertical position. And if it rotates back to a vertical position, what does it do? Well, it stops moving, of course. So this coanda duct, or this, this duct with a coanda lip, will try and remain stable at all times. It'll try and return to the stable vertical position. And that's a bit of a problem if you're trying to build a craft that's designed to go forward through the air. Because as soon as you start moving forward, the lift on the bottom of the lip increases and it tries to right itself. It's like it's got a gyro on it or an accelerometer. It's trying to right itself. And the very craft which was um, scuttled by this effect, if you read some of the documentation, was the Hiller Flying Platform. Back in about 1953, the Navy gave a contract to Hiller to develop a, a platform for soldiers. I think it was the Navy originally. They'd made an Army version as well. But uh, this, I think, was the ONR, the something or other Navy, Naval Reserves or something, gave this contract to Hiller to build a platform that someone could stand on. So effectively what it was is, if I get my little pen out again, find my black one, and my drawing is crap. I mean, I'm so bad at drawing. I can't even draw the curtains on a cold night. So excuse the way this looks. I'll put a picture on the on the video so you can see. Um, here's, here's the coanda lip. If we draw a sort of cross section, and it had two propellers, had some legs, and the pilot stood up here. Had a little frame he could hold on to. And that was the Hiller flying platform. What it did was, it sucked air in here. It had two propellers, they're about seven foot diameter, about two point something meters diameter. 
driven by two motors originally, so they contra-rotated, so it didn't spin around because the torque cancelled out. In fact, some of the controls enabled you, to enabled you to throttle the motors separately so you could actually rotate by varying the torque, like a coaxial helicopter. So it was a little, a little bit like a coaxial helicopter. But because it was using a coanda duct, and because we had the air travelling in over this lip into the duct proper, it was, didn't need gyros, didn't need anything. It would just sit there by itself. In fact, it was a weight shift craft. The pilot could control the craft by leaning forwards, leaning back, and it would change the center of gravity, which would produce a tilt on the platform. Problem was, no matter how hard they tried and no matter how far you leaned, the maximum speed was really low. Very, very low. So low, in fact, that it was pretty damn useless. Uh, it was just too stable. Now, what they did in later versions to try and get around this because there was a lot of vision I think called the Pawnee. The Pawnee had three motors and these are about 40 horsepower motors each so they had a lot of power goes into these but they ended up using three motors made it a bit bigger larger propellers and what they did to try and make it more controllable and faster was they actually put some little ducts in the bottom of or little veins in the bottom of the duct so they could basically angle these and try and get more speed out of it by deflecting the airflow. So basically if they wanted to go forward they would deflect the airflow back like that. That helped a little, but still the top speed, I think, was 16 miles an hour. Because no matter how much they tried, the effect of this self-stabilizing coanda lip basically made it try and self-right, which slowed it down. So, you know, um, th they needed that lip to get the lift because already they were using somewhere between 80 and 120 horsepower to lift it up. And it had a maximum height of 10 meters. So there was a lot of power required, even with the lip. If they'd taken the lip off so they didn't get this effect, it just wouldn't have got off the ground. So that is something really simple. The Coanda lip scuttled that project, effectively scuttled it, because they just couldn't make it fly. Anything other than hovering. Hovered brilliantly, but it wasn't going to be a battlefield mobile platform for soldiers if it could only move at snail's pace. Made it a target. There you go, thought you might be interested in that. Now, actually, while I'm thinking of it, the 1950s and early 60s was a really great time for aviation technology. One of the things that had happened is that the Second World War had finished, and in the Second World War, aviation showed itself as being the really important part of armed warfare. It was aircraft that won the Battle of Britain, and aircraft were obviously the future of warfare. So the US military were pouring huge amounts of money into developing new aviation technology. Companies like Hiller and a few others were swamped with American government contracts to develop crazy new ideas like the flying platform and pulse jets and all sorts of things. And of course, having just annexed the, the Germans, there was also a lot of technology ideas that they'd taken from German scientists and were putting into some of this military hardware. It was brilliant. Oh, it would have been great to be alive then actually because you know there was money going for, for any project that you come up with, which, which might have been slightly, you know, possible. I mean, in, I think it was Canada, Avro built the Avro flying car, which was like a flying saucer thing. That relied also heavily on the coanda effect. It had a gas turbine motor in the middle, and you can see the huge coanda duct trying to draw air right across the top to create a low pressure area. Didn't work very well, uh, but that was another sort of military folly happened just after the end of the Second World War uh, during the start of the Cold War. Brilliant time if you were into aviation and technology. Never mind. So there you go. I hope that has uh, explained what I was talking about. So if you're going to put these on your mini quad and when you start going forward, it's going to probably going to pitch up. It's probably going to pitch up. Now, whether that pitch up is violent or gentle, I don't know. I'm going to try them and find out. But it's something to be aware of. It probably explains why you don't see many if, although the technology is here, has been for decades, you don't see many flying craft with ducted fans, you know, on, on sticks. You know, you see them in artists' mock-up, you know. Um, in fact, I think there was one the military put out recently, a, a new kind of flying jeep, which will have ducted fans out on arms and fly. But they're going to have the same problem. They are. You notice the, um, what is it, the Martin jetpack? That's a, the ducted fan jetpack. Have you noticed that you've only ever seen video of that hovering and going up and down? Never fast forward flight. Have you wondered why that might be? They're using two ducted fans. Do you think they might have encountered this problem themselves? Because there was an earlier project called the Solo Trek. And that was a, just like the Martin Jetpack, had a couple of ducted fans that sat above your head and a motor on your back. And I think NASA invested five or eight million dollars trying to develop this thing. And ultimately it failed. Why did it fail? Was it down to this effect? I don't know. What point is there in having a jet backpack if your maximum speed is 16 miles an hour? So who knows? Anyway, that's the mechanics behind this effect. If you've got questions, if you've got comments, anything at all to say, stick them in the 
part of the page below this video where YouTube provides for space for you to do so. In the meantime, I've got heaps of stuff to get on with. I've got to put the um, prop ducts on the test stand, try them out. So thank you for watching. I will now get back to the bench. Bye. See you later.